No, anybody who knows anything about cars knows Camrys can last a long time, but people say, oh, they're boring, I don't want a boring Camry. Well, let's see. They really don't look boring anymore. They really up their designs. Wheels. The average is about 37, the top's about 40. Plenty of power and great gas mods. And it has tried and true technology. First of all, it has a real key. Ah, and under the hood, it has a four-cylinder inline engine connected to an automatic transmission that is not a CVT. It is not one of those CVTs that shift weird, feel weird. It is an eight-speed transmission, an actual automatic transmission. Now, in the past, when Toyota started putting multi-speed automatics, some people whined, I don't like the way it feels. They go for gas mileage, yes. And the earlier ones, sometimes they'd hunt between gears. We'll see how this one goes, but all the newer ones that I've tried out, they don't have the hunting problem that the old one does. Understand one thing about Toyota. They build something and they gradually work at perfection. They've been making Camrys a long time. They see something's wrong, they fix it. The original Camrys, yes, they were kind of ugly. They did run forever. They tried different variants when they tried those Lyros that were kind of fancy ones. Some of them were convertibles. But their basic four-door transportation car has just basically gotten better and better as time goes on. They find problems, they perfect them. They're not like the Americans who, well, that model didn't work, let's throw that away, let's try something else. No, they have a different philosophy in Japan. They want to gradually improve how they make things. Now, granted, in the past, they weren't much on style. Well, they certainly have gone way past that, and their style has changed immensely. Nice interior, black and chrome, and of course, it's a four-door. Plenty of room in the back, and at the same time, they have a really good combo of rideability and handling. Some people who really want handling, yeah, you wouldn't buy this. You'd buy the Camry TRD. It's got a much stiffer suspension, corners like a scalded ape. I mean, they really are fun to drive. But I took my wife on a ride in a TRD. She hated it. And she's driving a 20-year-old Lexus. She likes a nice, smooth ride. I take her for rides in regular Camrys. She loves it. It's just that the TRD has a really set-up suspension system so you can zoom around like a lunatic. That's not Toyota's market with this Camry. <laughs> It's for people who want a nice four-door car that can run forever. I see them all the time, five, six, seven hundred thousand miles on. Change your oil every five thousand miles. These things will generally last indefinitely. This 2.5 liter engine is excellent. Of course, it's got a timing chain on it. And the small problems that Toyota had ages ago, like my grandson's 2007 Camry that's got that horrible four-cylinder engine that they made for a few years that burnt oil like mad. That's way in the past. These aren't oil burners. And as we go inside, start her up. I notice they've improved their interface here. It used to be it sat up too high. Now, from where I sit, it doesn't block the window at all. It's more integrated. I would like it a little bit lower myself. I would have designed it a little bit lower, but that's what Toyota's doing. Fancy automatic transmission. You can go eco mode, normal mode, sport. Or if you want, you can shift it yourself. Very easy to use. And since it has an actual automatic transmission, you are actually shifting gears. This isn't a CVT that's pretending to shift gears to the marvels of modern computers and hydraulics. This is actually shifting gears. We'll try it out later. Now the seats are full leather, but they're very comfortable. And this stuff tends to last quite some time. I really like the combination because nothing wears like fabric. So the stuff you're sitting on, is really comfortable but it's still got a leather look to it and i personally kind of like this it doesn't have a sunroof because i personally think sunroofs are the dumbest thing on earth what do you want a sunroof for it just gets heat in and anyways with a solid roof you're safer that's part of the strength of the vehicle a solid roof i would rather have a solid roof over my head than some stupid sunroof that might shatter if something bad happens you can see it's got the automatic high beams you can turn the traction control off if you want. Simple setup, heating and air conditioning. I hate when they have all this stuff hidden up here on the computer. We got to scroll through a bunch of crap to get the heater or the AC on. This to me makes more sense. There's the defrost. Automatic. You can set the temperatures very simply. 
turn it off if you want turn it on again then when you change the speed you just push the button here you're not pushing your fingers all over much easier to operate so let's take it for a spin as smooth as can be decent backup camera nothing outrageous but yeah it's a decent camera typical camry smooth just like a dream like i say these don't hunt for gears and this is just a normal it's not a trd but you want to zoom around there's another one ha, they're everywhere same color too <laughs> so you can get 40 miles a gallon on a highway and it's getting 37 around the city with a regular transmission you don't have to sacrifice power and smoothness for a cvt this is power and smoothness and it's an actual automatic like i said and as we go down the road we'll try the old brakes abs works phenomenal and here we go to our little drag strip we're almost there makes a nice throaty sound too it's not dull like the old cameras it leaves a little bit of sound and nobody's behind us so we can come to a stop and we'll turn the traction control off and here we go Smooth shifting, listen to it. You can barely feel the shift. Like I said, these new multi-speed transmissions Toyota has, they got most of the bugs out of them. But just for giggles, let's put it in manual shifting. Here we are in second gear. Ooh, that was pretty fast. Downshift? Hey, it downshifts quick. Look at that. Hey. I gotta say, the manual is not like the older ones. They're kind of a time lag. This thing is crisp. It shifts manually smooth. Now, when it's an automatic, yeah, it shifts perfectly smooth then. But if you want to have a little sporty fun, just put it in a manual shifting. And you can see it's got lane departure because, see, it's warning us. Warning, warning, do not drive over the yellow line. Warning, warning. Well, I'm getting older. Maybe I need that now. I don't know. Then again, my wife said I needed it years ago. Well, in my defense, it isn't that easy to drive fast, film, talk, and think at the same time without running into something. <laughs> and as we come to a stop, nice and smooth. And look, it's not turning itself off. I love that. I hate that auto start stop. I find it annoying, and I think Toyota understands that many Americans find it annoying, so this doesn't have it. I love that. Most of them you can turn them off by pushing the button, but you gotta keep pushing the stupid button. We have it in eco mode, let's see what that does. I don't know, it doesn't seem eco to me, it's still got plenty of pickup. <laughs> Some of those eco modes are slow, hey, it didn't slow it down one iota. It's got the modern conveniences right there. It's telling you the speed limit and unfortunately you can also see it from the passenger side so my wife would see how fast I was going over the limit well you can't have everything usually the heads-up display this doesn't have it you can't see from that side so I would rather have a heads-up display that has a speed limit on the windshield where I can see it and my wife can't now even though this isn't the Camry TRD with the really trick suspension this thing still is fun to drive in a twist it still has pretty crisp handling no particular over or under steer of course it's beeping at me now because i'm not using the turn signal while i'm playing around now watch i'll put the turn signal on now it won't beep because it knows i have my turn signal on so i guess that system won't help those crazy people that are driving down the highway with their turn signal all the time because it won't beep at them if they go over the line because they have their turn signal on. So these machines can't keep fools from themselves. <laughs> Realize that. They're not miracles. Fools will still continue being fools whether computers are advising them or not. So there you have it, a 2022 Camry. Now, the owner traded in a Mustang that had 14,000 miles. Not because the Mustang was falling apart, but because he didn't like 13 miles a gallon anymore. And he's getting <laughs> almost 40 on this thing. And he says, this is just as much fun to drive around. It really handles quite well. And I do have to say, for all the people that whined about Toyota multi-speed automatic transmissions, hunting for gears and not feeling right, this feels perfect. Whether it's by itself, extremely smooth, or putting it in manual, and really zooming it. That's what impressed me because the older ones, you'd shift them up and down manually, there'd be a 
a little bit of a wait, sometimes even a second, before it'd go up or down in gear, felt sloshy. This didn't feel sloshy, because realize, this is not a CVT transmission. It isn't doing fake gear changes, because CVTs don't have gears. It is changing actual gears. It's going five, six, six, five, four, whatever. It says on the dash what it is, but it actually works like most things Toyota. It doesn't look boring. It doesn't drive boring. And really, he's got 30 grand into this thing. The average car is now 49 grand for a new one. Ha, pretty good deal if you ask me. 2022 Tacoma SR5. Now, of course, they're not giving them away. He paid 33 for this. But still, this is a four-cylinder version, and for him, it's a little low on horsepower. This four-cylinder engine has like 158 horsepower. The V6, on the other hand, has a whopping 278 horsepower, a lot more horsepower. But then again, you gotta consider the early Toyota Hilux has had only 78 horsepower. So, you know, it's good enough to get down the road. It's not a race truck by any stretch of the imagination. Although with the V6, it is relatively quick. And this is the SR5 4x4. It's a very good four-wheel drive system, tried and true in Toyota. He got uh, in the mid-20s on a highway gas mileage, which is as good as you're going to get in a conventional engine gasoline. And I like it because... It's still got a key. Yeah, it's an immobilizer key, but it's got a key. I don't like the keyless remotes. These are much harder to steal because you got an immobilizer in the key, but also a cut key. You got to have a key. Keyless remotes, people can copy them. You don't need a key. They don't have a key. Computer stuff can be done. You can't make a key out of a computer. It's got to actually be done. So it's a safer system. Now it is an SR5. So you get into the back here and it's rather small doesn't have doors that open so his dog doesn't like it <laughs> now realize one thing this is a Tacoma that was made in dun, 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 Mexico notice it doesn't say Mexico but it says Guanajuato well it is Mexico oh it does say Mexico there it is made in Mexico it even says it they're not hiding it. And it turns out that the charge port doesn't work. A customer buy one of these Mexican-made Tacomas, and there's the radio didn't work. So they got to fix that. But it just kind of shows you. If you understand Toyota, quality is the big deal with Toyota. But you make them in Mexico, you're not going to have the same quality. That's just the way it goes. Stuff made in Mexico, the quality is just not as good as the Japanese. That's just a fact. There's no way out of it. You look at the Bronco Sports that are coming out of Mexico. The quality of them, not so great. Now, the quality of the actual Broncos, which are made in the same Bronco factory in Michigan that they always made them, seems to be a much higher quality. Of course, those are different vehicles too because the Bronco Sport is unibody. It doesn't have a frame with the body bolted on where in the case of the Bronco made in Michigan, that has an actual full frame. And in the case of this Tacoma, you can see underneath, yes, it has a full frame. <laughs> they didn't cheese out. <laughs> it's got a full solid frame. It's not a joke truck. It's a real truck. And as you can see from the front here, it's got the axles for the front because it's four wheel drive. And then it's got a big differential in the back for the rear. Now the owner of this truck says it's an interim vehicle. He wanted to build up his credit. So he wanted to buy it on credit. And he really wants to get the big Ford for doing plowing. But he made a very smart choice because he admits if he's going to get the big Ford, maybe if the prices come down, this will hold its value. It certainly will. I've actually had customers buy these things new a couple years ago and they traded them in and they got more money than they paid for it in the first place. With these prices gone sky high, if you want to fiddle around with trading vehicles, it's a lot easier to do than it used to be. It used to be you'd lose your shirt. You bought a new truck and then traded it in two or three years later, you'd lose your shirt. But in the case of this, no. He bought a solid vehicle that's going to hold up for ages. But on the other hand, one of my sons was thinking about getting a four-wheel drive truck. So if he gets tired of this thing and he wants to get a Ford, maybe I'll buy it from him for my son. <laughs> Truth be told, it's a pretty Spartan vehicle. It's a Tacoma pickup, but they can run forever. Everything in them is tried and true. Now, as you can see, it's old school, but old school works. Look at this. What's this? It still has a power steering pump on it. And I like that simplicity. Most modern vehicles have gone to electronic power steering. You get a tiny bit better gas mileage, but when they break, they cost a fortune. 
these power steering pumps, I've seen them last half a million miles on Toyotas. I'll take dependability myself. You can see it's a four cylinder, there's plenty of working room, but then again, it's a Toyota, and you probably won't have to work on it other than changing the oil and filter. And here's kind of a funny thing. Usually when you buy a new Toyota, you got those cool batteries, fancy Japanese. Not this one's made in Mexico. You can see this battery came from Tamaning Guam. <laughs> It's not the fancier ones. I guess they want to save money whenever they can, so they're putting a Guam battery in instead of a Japanese one. Truth be told, I've had customers get Mexican-made Toyota Tacomas, 250, 300,000 miles. They're still going down the road. It's not like the engines and transmissions are made in Mexico. They're just put together there. Let's take it for a spin. It's a Toyota. Of course it's going to start up. There's no arguing that. And it's a base vehicle, so, you know, you get a tiny little backup camera. Nothing gigantic, but I mean, what the heck. Now, being a 4x4, four four, it's high up in the air, so my giant berm here that keeps water from going in the yard is no problem for it. It actually rides over it quite smoothly. So, floor here, you can see, it's not a race truck by any stretch of the imagination, but it's not supposed to be either. If you want power and speed in the Tacoma, you get the V6, but then again, you're going to pay a lot more, sometimes as much as ten to $15,000 more with the way prices are today. So here we go down to the road, and of course, it handles perfectly fine. It's, it's a pickup truck, and the four-wheel drive works great. Not all those crazy lights and everything like the Ford. If you remember the Bronco, that I did, that was just too much. Every time you put the key in, close the door on the Bronco, a bunch of rocks rolled up on the screen, turned into a Bronco and jumped up in the air. And there was outer space music and stars on the main dash to look at. This is old tech, that's new tech. But I imagine this thing is gonna outlast the new tech quite a distance. You want a basic truck, you really can't go wrong with this. If this is a big enough truck for what you want. Now he doesn't think it's big enough for his plowing and stuff and with all the weight of a plow he's probably telling the truth but I don't know it really didn't snow that much this year in Rhode Island. <laughs> now I do have to say the owner of this truck is a little bit crazy as far as I'm concerned because he bought this as an interim truck to build up his credit before he gets a big Ford. You could drive this thing forever. I would never use it as an interim truck. I would just keep it and drive it forever. But for his situation, if he does want to get a big Ford, put a plow on it, what the heck? He'd probably get more money than he paid for it if he gets rid of it in a year and decides to get the Ford truck, because really, it's not a towing truck by any stretch of the imagination. It is an all-around four-wheel drive, little pickup truck that can go just about anywhere. Since it is a four by four, and being a Toyota, it'll probably last forever. Now, this is a new one, it's 2022, but hey, my son's old dinosaur with 200-something thousand miles the plastic liner on that is still in good shape and it doesn't even have a top on it. And contrary to the goofball politicians in this country, I don't see electric vehicles taking over anytime soon. I have been asked by a lot of my customers, do you think I should buy a gasoline car? Maybe I should buy an electric car. Let me tell you, I guarantee you, this thing will be driving down the road decades from now. It's not going to be the end of gasoline here in the United States. This is a 2001 4Runner. Now, of course, the 4Runners just started out as a pickup truck. You can still see a little bit left in it. And then they became very popular SUVs. Now, the main problem that I see people having with buying a used 4Runner is people say they want too much money for them. They're just too expensive. But then, expense is in the eye of the beholder. This guy bought this thing when it only had 19,000 miles on it in 2002 as a used vehicle. And as we can see as we go inside now, this baby has 386,000 miles on it. And take a listen to the engine as we start it up. Start trot up even though it's cold. We'll put it in drive. Doesn't shake at all. Smooth as can be. If you put a blindfold on me, I couldn't tell you if this was a new truck or an old truck. That's how well built these things are. Now, granted, this one was made in Japan, but it certainly was well made in Japan. For people who are wondering what to buy, personally, for all round vehicle, this setup is the best. As we look under the back, we can see 
it's classic rear wheel drive big old axle in the back rear wheel drive and check this out the frame solid as can be the only rusty part hey that's the add-on tow hitch <laughs> the original stuff is still solid it's the add-on one that was made as well as the toyota product that's got rust but that's just a covering and it's superficial that's still real solid metal it's nothing to worry about it's just cosmetic and really unless you spend your life crawling under your vehicle do you really care what it looks like under there as you look under the front it is not a front wheel drive vehicle you can see there's no axle coming in the front i'll shift the other side so you can get a better view there you can see there's no axle in there although you can see there's a hole there <laughs> they can build them you can add it on if you really wanted to go through a lot of use but really most people they don't really need all wheel drive it's a good stable vehicle with rear wheel drive unless you're one of those off-roaders you live out in a mud hut somewhere with potholes and mud road these are perfectly fine the majority of my customers with them never take them off the street so you're really kind of throwing your money away going all wheel four wheel drive yeah, unless you live in a big snow belt and you're worried about that then go right ahead you'll find that these plain rear wheel drive ones will cover most situations you're going to get into and of course realize less is better if you're not going to use it don't buy it they cost more you get worse gas mileage two-wheel drive ones are perfectly fine now since all the four runners are made in japan yeah they're not going to be cheap cost money to make good vehicles in japan 300 something thousand miles on this listen to the engine check it out now let's idle down a little solid engine still really quiet the exhaust sounds perfect Now you might say, oh, it's smoking. Oh, yeah, it's cold out today. That's condensation. <laughs> it's gonna smoke when you start it when it's cold outside. People smoke too when it's cold. And some people say, look, water's coming out. Something's wrong. No, in this case, absolutely nothing's wrong. When you burn gasoline, which is basically carbon and hydrogen, one of the byproducts is H2O, water vapor. All cars will give a certain amount of water off when you start them out first because they're letting water out, plus they have metal exhaust systems. When they cool down, they have a tendency of absorbing water vapor. When they heat, the water's gotta come out somewhere. So that's normal. This thing doesn't lose coolant, doesn't have a blowing head gasket. You're gonna see that on any car, and you're gonna see the smoke when it's cold outside because it's cold. And the combination of the water vapor inside the exhaust and the hot exhaust, you're gonna see smoke. Now, if you want a solid vehicle, these forerunners are for you. They're still made with solid frames. So they're unlike any other SUV practically out there. They're still on a solid frame. Now the six cylinder engine puts out 183 horsepower. It's not a racing machine, but it wasn't designed for that. It's a nice truck frame, very solid, reliable vehicle. 380,000 miles, whatever this thing has, a lot of miles to have it still running as good as it's running now the new ones of course have a little bit more horsepower but they're never meant to be speed demons therefore reliability and you can still tow stuff this thing can tow up to 5,000 pounds it's a basically truck turned into an suv and they kept it old style and me i like old style reliability solid frames never going to come apart these are vehicles that you could drive forever if you wanted to if eventually the engine or transmission wears out you can replace them they sold so many of them if you're like me you go to a junkyard buy a salvage one you can get rebuilt ones you can do whatever you want but they do have a tendency of lasting so long that you really don't have to do much to them at all in most cases except change the oil and the only bad thing that ever happened to this was he took it to a Toyota dealer for oil change and they wrecked the car but they paid for the damage and fixed it all back up again and that was years ago it's still going perfectly fine and that hilarious story just follows my philosophy entirely hey learn to change your own oil do it in your driveway make sure it was done right you got the right oil in it and you don't have some young kid or real lead foot mechanic driving it around and smashing it up and i mean look at the quality of it 
It's old, it's got a ton of miles. The paint and the finish is still in excellent shape. The Japanese care. And sure, if you look here, you can see a little fading, but that's not even the car's fault. Somebody left something square out here in the rain. You could buff it out if you really wanted to. So let's take it for a ride, see how it goes. Away we go. Nice, stable handling. Now, this does bounce a little. I'll give you that. It's got the case of the bouncies. But I already knew that because I checked on the front struts are leaking they're all leaked out hey you know 380 something thousand miles you expect to put struts on eventually now you notice you're plenty high enough in the air here you got lots of clearance yet it's still stable it doesn't feel like it's going to tip over like a cheaper made suv does with too much body roll now as i said it's no race car he will take off from a stop i mean it accelerates it's nothing rocketing about it but you hear how smooth that transmission still shifts it still shifts like a dream with all this mileage as all that this thing is i would have no qualms of jumping in it turning the keys and driving the thing from tennessee to california and back at least after i put struts back on it <laughs> new ones i'd like to have a little bit better handling if i'm driving all the way to california and when you're just cruising around Hey, it's reasonably quiet, you know, let's face it, it's based on a truck chassis, but it's a reasonably quiet vehicle, rides quiet, the engine's quiet, it's just a big, heavy, nice riding, full frame SUV. Now, if you don't believe my analysis, let's see what the computer has to say. You can't hide from the computer data. Blah, 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 we'll see what comes up. And we'll start the diagnosis. All right, it does good. The only code it has is the ABS system. Those things often break when the cars are that old. C1224, that there's no signal open or short. Now that code means that the right rear wheel speed sensor isn't giving anything out, so it's probably gone bad. A lot of guys will live without it. Yeah, when they get this old, the ABS doesn't work all that great anyway, so it just reverts to non-ABS normal braking, and this thing seems pretty fine to me, driving it around and stopping. I have no problems, it doesn't pull. It stops nice and fast, doesn't have any problems. Now since that was the only code, let's check live data that gives you some really good idea what kind of shape the vehicle is in and here we go we'll go through the data now for a car with that kind of gas mileage the long-term fuel trim is only 0.82 percent some of them must see 15 or 20 that's hardly anything subtracting just a tiny bit of fuel and the short-term fuel trim it's adding 2.3 that's kind of remarkable considering how old this vehicle is i mean look at the fuel trim 99.15 percent almost 100 percent pretty good for something with 380,000 miles on it and if you remember from my other videos if any of this data is orange there's a problem i don't see any orange yet we look at the misfire counts zero across the board one through six i don't feel any and the computer just says yes and here we go again total fuel trim 1.02 that's out of one so it's almost perfect i gotta say this whole forerunner is a better shape than i am <laughs> Sure, I'm 67. I'm older than it is, but it does have 386,000 miles on it. I don't know how many miles I have on me, though. The odometer broke a long time ago. Even though this is a 2001 with 386,000 miles, it's still an excellent vehicle. And in most cases, if somebody's trying to sell you a vehicle with 386,000 miles, people are going to say, you must be out of your mind to buy a vehicle with that kind of mileage. In this case, if you got a good enough price, you'd be out of your mind not to buy it so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos remember to ring that bell